time for breaking bread with Papa. Hey, don't you know? Hey, it's also time. a show. In a vest. Hey, fit in this and cheers. Then, cheers. Should we have cheers before? Oops. I don't know if you cheers. I don't know what the etiquette is with espresso. I don't think there's any pros or cons to it. There's no bad <laughs> luck like there is with. Yeah, with booze. Water. Okay. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, you're not supposed to. You're not supposed to cheers with water. Yeah, that's right. That's bad luck. Mm-hmm. And there's always someone with water at the table. Yeah, so I wonder if I've done it. I think it's so ingrained in me that I haven't. I just keep my water to myself. <laughs> you don't I drink? I do not do it. I know I drink occasionally. I'm not, yeah. a, I'm, I'm not a big party animal. Yeah. Um, Were you ever? Not really. I mean, like, I, okay, I say that, and then sometimes I've been reminded by a few college friends of sometimes. <laughs> and I was like, well, I did. I guess I forgot those. Uh and I do remember Chicago early days because mm-hmm. late night bars, all the sh- stand up yeah. shows were in bars. I do have like a photo of me on <laughs> a bar standing doing a full extension, <laughs> like which is the beer, your arm has to be full extended and you're pouring the beer. It's like I. Like a funnel? Just you take a beer can and just pour it in your mouth oh. from up here <laughs> on high. I've never seen that. It's called the full extension. <laughs> um, I was wet from uh, lips to lips, you know? I just drip right down the front. Oh, uh, but there's a photo of that that I, oh, I guess I'm funny. proud of, you know. <laughs> um, so yeah, I definitely used to drink. Yeah, but I for I'm thankful it was never a problem. I'm right, not one of the never turned into yeah, um, that had to deal with that. Yeah, I, I will say even in college days, I was always doing the I'd rather get ice cream, and it wasn't a calorie uh-huh. thing. Like I, if I'm choosing my calories, like no. Yeah, it, it they felt synonymous, which is so funny because you know when our friend like a friend of ours steps drinking booze they show up with a little candy or a yeah. sucker <laughs> so <laughs> yeah I, but i didn't know, really put that together yeah i just was a, my first visit to the dentist i had six cavities so i've just <laughs> always loved sugar and That's that was so more funny. appealing to me than a beer because i literally today was thinking uh i baked you bread i baked you this bread i'm honored yeah, it's beautiful i'm honored. it's a really a good one yeah i, I absolutely it knows it you can really tell that how much you like the person and look forward to seeing them by how the bread comes <laughs> out <laughs> should i just leave it be for now and i open it later you can look at it Maybe now if you peak. want yeah yeah this will be a little asmr for the folks we also i we've never done this before but we have a new toaster oven if you feel hungry during okay. it we, you could always cut Let's it and it we, i'll toast it for you but the question is do we have butter is the issue? we do okay just <laughs> yeah how's it look it looks beautiful, mm-hmm. and I only recently, because a little uh, video, I'm trying to think about what I saw it on probably Instagram, uh-huh. realize how you do a little cut at the top. It is an actual yeah, cut. with yeah. a little sh- It looks beautiful. It's like a, the, it's not burned, obviously, so good job on that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, there is a, uh, there is a method it good. that it kind of looks burnt, and some people in the bread world feel like. That's when the real flavor comes out. Oh. It's just okay. lightly burnt, but I have a hard time getting it, there. It looks like it's in a great spot, not underdone, not overdone. Right. I can't I, wait. I I'm so thankful it. I'm not on the road this week because this is a full week of bread for me at home. That's Yeah, that's great. Like I'm going to eat this for breakfast that's every, fantastic. The, next, the rest of the week, so thank you. You're very welcome. But while I was thinking about it, as I was baking your bread, mm-hmm. I was like, should I bring her something else to eat? And I was thinking candy. Well... I should have brought you candy. You weren't wrong. I wasn't wrong. That's weird. But also, this is my other little vice. I'm I'm a coffee candy person. Yeah. I managed, uh, after my time in the bagel biz, Mm. I was in the bagel industry for a long time, then I moved to cafes, and Mm. I managed one in Chicago, and then out here, my first job was Intelligentsia Coffee. Oh. So that was like an actual schooling situation. Yeah. Where it became like a trade. Now they've been bought by Pete's, and it's a kind of a different story over there. Right. Oh, really? They yeah. are? But we had a store educator at the time named Percy, and uh-huh. I wasn't allowed to touch milk for like eight months. <laughs> I was doing dishes. <laughs> was it, Did you learn a lot? Mm-hmm. I learned how to pour uh, latte art and rosettas and cappuccinos. and Wow. Yeah. Um, and how to pull espresso. And m- my palate was definitely like refined, and you- I had to do... Um, cuppings in the morning. Wow. Um, and put the flavor profile in all the c- coffees. Like really? Coffees, yeah. Oh, that's amazing. I, I'm so. actually happy because I have maintained, like, or I should say r- retained um, some of that education. Yeah. What is, uh, what is, what do you drink? How do you do it at home? Um, this week I have been doing um, Go Get Em Tigers, uh, Columbia coffee. 
pour over at home or I actually just do a drip i will speak to that point we did pour over at intelligentsia we never did batch brew there it's all by you know handmade right and i don't even know how long years after leaving there uh-huh. i didn't make coffee at home because i i was like oh i'll mess it up i'll get it wrong really? i don't have a scale i didn't ha- i couldn't afford a scale or right a grinder or <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I, I haven't even attempted to think of an, of an analogy like that would work with that when you get home and you're like yeah i can't do this i can't do this i don't have all the proper tools <laughs> right. and it's like well people literally crush up beans that have been in a can for like 17 years yeah <laughs> so right yeah just take Got, a swing on the streets yeah. in mexico yeah <laughs> so now i'm over that i'm a little less That's it's funny. I have I grind it at home. Good. But I do a drip and sometimes I'll do a pour over. Either right. a, a, a V sixty or yeah. A yeah. V sixty. I'm the only one that drinks coffee at my house, so I do a pour over. It's just a single the cup. The girls don't? The girls do they kind of come in and out. Yeah, I mean I do I wouldn't I don't know when I started drinking coffee, but Yeah, it was about high school. It was high, it's funny, I just sent them a a video they're now in college so they're not okay. there that's what i was thinking i was like yeah. how, i knew they were like later high school but i don't think i drank coffee in high school yeah this generation starts at like junior yeah. high <laughs> the marketing of it and it's so available but i had a uh what's her name Susie orman yeah right she had a there was a clip of her on instagram tell and my like my daughter when i leave the house all of a sudden i always see like a delivery guy bringing one thing of Starbucks. No. Or Alfred's, like, up to <laughs> Is the that thing. on your credit she, card? Oh, yeah. Yeah. They, oh yeah. Goodness. She totally. You naughty girl. Yeah. She, they uh, completely abuse. Uh, <laughs> but I sent them a thing <laughs> that said, she's like, uh, she was on Morning Joe, and the interviewer was said to her, um, you never have a Starbucks. You never. You, she goes, No. When, why would I spend money on Starbucks? And she's like, because it's great. She's like, do you realize if you don't go to Starbucks and you keep that money and at 25 years old, you put $100 in a average index fund at $25, I mean, at 25 years old, $100 a month, when you're 65, you will have a million dollars. So I don't go to Starbucks. I've never had Starbucks. I'm not going to. That is a waste. Young wow. people, it's a waste. So I sent that to my daughters. And they're like, how about like, we save a hundred bucks? Yeah, I know. They're like, they, they're like, what if we save a hundred dollars, but also go to Starbucks? God, where could you How about you pay corners? for the Starbucks? Yeah. And Do you give really me a, need a haircut? And give me a hundred dollars. <laughs> Do you need glasses? <laughs> yeah. Skip some of your things. It was, I think... I think you have to have coffee in your life, though, for oh, sure. Oh, yeah. I mean, There's no way. I very much lately, I've known it for a long time, but I mm-hmm. will say uh, maybe it was as recently as this week. Yeah. It kind of was like, I did it a lot is what I'm saying. And it sounds like I'm about to do some sort of big reveal. Yeah. <laughs> it's just that like I was in Philly doing helium and it's like in my hotel fridge, I had maybe... It's like I would go out for the day, get coffee, uh-huh. drink it, get one more to go, uh-huh. drink that while I'm walking, not not finish it really, and then get another one and put it in the fridge because I might want it before the show. <laughs> cold? So, so sometimes cold, sometimes hot. Right. I got my drinks are black coffee. Yeah, me too. Um, sometimes I'll do an Olay, but with just like a little, like more like a topper, a uh-huh. steamed milk topper with whole milk. Right. <laughs> and a cortado or a cappuccino. Oh, that's me. nice. So those are my... What kind of milk? Whole. Whole milk. Yeah. yeah. Those are my rotation, but like I just noticed it a lot. I It's certainly, <laughs> it's what am I trying to say? It's more of like an event or a little treat or yeah. a ritual than me actually like chugging it. <laughs> and it's wasteful. And when I left the hotel on Sunday, I had a full... Uh-huh. Ice latte, which is, I sometimes I'll randomly do that when yeah. I clearly don't want it, but I'm just there to buy something. And you don't want to be in the hotel getting ready for your show and think, and not being able to get it. Yeah, I don't know. I just, and especially because the, the good places usually close around four, sometimes seven. Mm-hmm. But I'm just, I can tell you where all the good places are, like for good coffee in whatever city there's a club. But yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the biggest thing. My whole hotel choice is based on where the coffee, if I can walk to coffee. Yeah. I don't mind leaving it out on my desk and then just drinking it cold yeah. much later. I'll do that too. Yeah. <laughs> Even this morning I made it for myself and as I was like finishing up some notes on something, I just added two ice cubes. Oh. Ice it up. 
Because it's already so, gone room temp. Yeah. It's starting to get cold. Uh-huh. I'm, like, I'm going to add two ice cubes and sip on it. It's an addiction, right? I would I mean, imagine so. I mean, when but you I, go through the airport. I, I think if you measured how much I actually drank of each thing. Right. I'm, I don't feel through the mm-hmm. roof. I'm not like. Yeah. I'm not uh, vibrating. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, and yeah. that is why I think it's wasteful. And therefore, yeah, maybe leaning towards addiction or just some sort of like. Yeah. Unnecessary ritual where it absolutely could be saving money. 100%. Right. Or you could just be treating yourself well and feeling good and yeah. secure and happy yeah. for a minute. But there's nothing wrong with that. Right, totally. So when you went into the coffee world, did you uh, start to look back on your bagel days as that was like blue collar living? <laughs> <laughs> I definitely smelled a different type of way when I left. <laughs> when I left the bagel shop, it was we were a steamed bagel shop. Uh huh. Have you ever been to one of those? Yeah, where okay. the where the windows are yeah. all yeah, wet. Was, some people <laughs> feel, don't like it because they're like the sandwiches is wet or mushy or whatever. Uh-huh. But um, I mean, I love it. I love all I, different kinds of bagels. Yeah. But um, I would leave there <laughs> smelling like I didn't even know how to describe a wet dog or something. <laughs> so leaving the yeah. cafe smelling like coffee was a welcome. Yeah. Yeah. But also, intelligentsia was sort of particularly back then when I moved in 2011, was a little more highbrow. And uh-huh. if you stumbled in there yeah. and you said $5, I mean, so many times I got the question, why is that $5? Uh-huh. And when you're making, I forget what I made, honestly. I don't want to exaggerate. I think it was in the eight range, uh-huh. eight to 12, or is 12 what it is now? Per hour? Uh, yeah, like minimum wage. Joey, what do you what do you make? <laughs> eight? <laughs> eight an hour? Seven. <laughs> but it was lowish. You yeah. know, every two weeks I'm getting a paycheck for 300 bucks. That was a huge wake-up call for my move here. Uh-huh. <laughs> but, um, you know, when somebody's like, why is that $5 for a cup? I'm over here being like, I don't know. That's how I'm trying to make, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah, so exactly. Like, I would, I realize, like somebody was rude to me as I was leaving the Philly hotel. Uh-huh. It was a barista who was on his phone behind the counter and no one was in there. And I couldn't get out of the hotel door. And he's like, instead of... um being helpful walking yeah. around the counter or like just maybe changing it up on yeah. repeat he just kept going push it and open it push it then press push it and press it at the same time push it and press it like, like push it and press it at the same time push it and press it at the same time and i was like maybe if you say it the same way one more time <laughs> i'll get it and so when he came over i, I go i understand you're frustrated Good for you. I'm sorry. You Good know, for and he's you. like, okay, it's fine. But it's like in that exchange, Ugh. it bothered me. I yeah. thought about it over and over and yeah. over in my head and what I could have said that was better. Because what I said was pretty good. That is good. But I thought of what I could do better. Uh-huh. And all I could also think was this is karma for a time I looked at somebody who asked me why it was five bucks and I was like, it's direct trade coffee. <laughs> you know. You were that person. It's from the farmer while. to the bean to the <laughs> cop. I mean, it wasn't that I was so proud to be part of the yeah. company. It was sort of like the repetition. It costs a lot because a human picked it, not a machine. <laughs> you know, I don't think customer service should be hourly. I think it should be how many times you say hi, can I help you? And once you ding, right. once you clock like two twenty, you're yeah. like, I'm out, y'all. <laughs> yeah, you could just tap out, mm-hmm. go to the back. Yeah, because it is maddening. But stars would come yeah. into there, like definitely celebs, uh-huh. and people I. And it was a theme that I would later appreciate them, meaning I wasn't a fan at the time of them coming in. Mm-hmm. And then later I would watch or know their stuff and be like, oh, my gosh, that was cool. <laughs> That's cool. I, I, I serve coffee. Yeah. Did uh, So you came here in 2011? Mm-hmm. Oh. From Chicago, right? Yes. 2011. Yep. Interesting. Yeah. Sometimes I'm like, how do we keep track of all the numbers? I know. Yeah, doing the math is always, that's my motto, don't do the math. Don't do the, don't math. Do the math. But I always had the impression that you were, uh, you came out of the ground in Los Angeles. <laughs> Just sprouted. <Yeah. laughs> I was Chicago. Yeah. Moved, put all my stuff in my mom's old O2 Mercury Sable. Nice. The Sable. And she just let you it. take it? She was turning 60 and she was buying herself a new car, a Honda CRV, and her dad had given her that. Uh-huh. Sable tooth tiger and so she said i'd like to give it to you and i said thank you so much and at the time things were probably a little tense between us and uh-huh. <laughs> why I was probably less grateful than i could have been i mean i said thank you and stuff but we were just right. sort of like i was like get me out of here yeah, put all my stuff in the car and i drove cross country with my best friend i mean i had saved up the most amount of money i'd ever made and mm-hmm. i can't believe i moved out with what i moved out with 
It's crazy, right? I don't I never want to be the grandma like, that's like well, I mean I don't know that. Back in the day. Yeah, that's like <laughs> I moved out here with ten dollars and a shoestring or I don't know what that would be. But yeah. um I do I think it was like twelve hundred dollars. Yeah. And you were like, Oh this This'll do. I am set. Yeah. And I was like, I don't even have to worry about getting a job right away. <laughs> right. Cut to I got a job the d- second day I arrived. Uh-huh. And I was like a little mad about it. Yeah. Only, which sounds bad, but I just mean like I was like, Oh, I thought I'd have some fun first. Yeah. Then my first paycheck is $120, and I'm like, we got to get another job. <laughs> we need another job. This isn't going to work. Yeah, and, and I had I was lucky to crash with friends for, like, the first two months. I'm, like, looking back at that, like, yeah. who would I ever let stay on my couch for a month? Can't think of anybody. Now, why is, like, so what's happened to us? Yeah. That, that, that young, broke I know. person who could live on... Ten dollars a night, yeah. <laughs> Making it whatever club, or and then like just crashing and the, like what happened? Is it just become too tiring, or do we we have perspective, or you taste what not living that way is? Right. Like I think what it's is it? That, but that's a slow process. I didn't jump into being like, oh, no. I, I, yeah, I, I, it takes I, There's a while. so many different ways to handle that because the first time you get an influx of money, you might be the person who like squirrels it away uh-huh. it might be the person who splurges but really that means like a pair of shoes right. or you blow it all yeah. you're the person that blows it all right and you're the person that blows it no all? no i'm not <laughs> oh i'm squirrel away yeah yeah um or, or <laughs> buy a pair of shoes but um <laughs> and one sneakers. Pair of shoes. Yeah. but yeah where did that go i mean yeah. i always say i know too much there's that like mm-hmm. I never, I don't like being jaded, but sometimes that is real. And I think that is actually a product of tempering expectations. Mm-hmm. So uh, the jadedness comes from, I'm on Conan for the first time. I go to Ye Rustic with my friends and, yeah. and I say to the bartender or my friend does like, Hey, my friend's on Conan. Can we put it on? And they go, no. <laughs> and I was like, okay, that's how it is here, you know? Right. Or the first time I'm near a celebrity or writing on something where they're there, uh-huh. or, and I'm just like, I'm the person who's like, don't say anything. Yeah. Or even being in the same green room, I remember at Meltdown with like, like Bobcat brought Robin Williams, and Robin Williams was one of my heroes movie-wise. Yeah. I wasn't a stand-up kid, but... Uh-huh. And it's like, I didn't say anything to him. Right. You know? Yeah. And yeah. I was just like, I don't want to bother. But so yeah. I guess it's just sort of tamping down mm-hmm. for survival. Yeah, protection. And now I have less of like... How cool is it? And it is. Yeah. That you asked me to be on your podcast. Right. That I'm here. Yeah. And I get to be talking to a microphone. Yeah. You're giving me the gift of sharing your fans with me. Right. I always am appreciative of that. Yeah, yeah. But it's just sort of like, I don't know. I don't know. I yeah. don't let myself get as excited. Yeah. I don't believe it's real. Yeah, it's interesting. And sometimes I need to pinch myself and go, yeah, but you're yeah, right. But wait a minute. Look what I'm doing. Yeah. Look who I'm with. All that kind of stuff. My wife would always say to me, uh, "Are you excited about tonight's show?" Yeah. I'd be like, "Excited." <laughs> I'm dreading it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. I know that that is that is the weird part too. Yeah. The funny thing is, my mom would sometimes, and this bothered me to the point where I said something. Uh huh. She'd be like, "Oh, do you have to do a show?" And I was like. <laughs> That's why I'm here. You know, like right. I, it, it was the opposite. Yeah. Because I'm so tired because I worked with three jobs that day because right. I have to go out at night. And yeah. The nighttime's scary, <laughs> you know, and I'm like, don't, what do you mean do I yeah. have to do a show? That's my job. Yeah. I roll. <laughs> you know, your mom can Yeah. Really it's anything, weird. Right? Like the perspective of, of it all kind of changes. Like you, you're scrambling and scrambling and scrambling and then you get kind of, it's kind of. There's a safety too. Like you get into a, a, a way of living where it's like, okay, this is good. So I don't like thinking back. I, I can kind of compare it to when I had a motorcycle and I would ride all the time and it was like, I, it was safe. Every day that I don't get on a motorcycle, it seems more and more insane. Yeah. It's like, what? I just yeah, go through that's, traffic that's on, a great a, on this crazy bike. And like my daughter's going to graduate college and go to New York. And I'm like, how's she going to do it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like, yeah. I did it. I lived on a bagel yeah, a night. Yeah. <laughs> you I know? lived on three bagels a day. But now that I'm cushy. <laughs> when you work in the shop, you eat company cheese. <laughs> yeah. But then you get that security and you're like, I, the, the, the idea of looking at her is like being on a motorcycle. Yeah. Right? No, that's, I think that's a perfect example because, like, I've, I'm sure you have too. Like, I, I, I've, I don't make a 
habit of it, but here and there I've talked to students, either USC or, yeah. or even some from my alma mater. And, uh -huh. you know, times have changed so drastically. I have a, a very different approach to what I say to them. Mm. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not the scared straight person. <laughs> right. I'm also the very aware that's like, there could be an app called dingle that comes out tomorrow and I'm opening for you, you know? Like, <laughs> <Right. laughs> um, so it's like, I tell them all that and I go, I can tell you what I did, but right. it doesn't even apply to you. Yeah. I just like me reading, uh, Carol Burnett's book, which I loved one mm -hmm. more time or, um, mm -hmm. Whatever, any comics book I've read. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of another one that sticks out to me. Jane Lynch. It's like, yeah. I could see how she did it, uh, but then what? Yeah. I'm going to go here and do that. And, you know, like, no. so if anything, it's like, I love reading comics autobiographies. It's mm -hmm. like kind of my favorite. But you have to go, everybody's story is different. That's the takeaway. Yeah. The roadmap's different. And de de but, I mean, the, I, but the anxiety and the yeah. performance of it. There was this great book. Do you ever see that book? Uh, I think it's just called Comedians. It's just black and white. It's pretty, th like, this, it's this shape. This is getting bigger by the <laughs> it's second. It's this shape. It's big. It's like a big, and it's... Uh, How, who books that? Robin Williams, is on the, Robin Williams is on the cover. And it's these black and white shots of the comic, and, they, and then their little wow. sidebars of, like, how they prepare and, like, all this kind of stuff. It's a beautiful book. Wow. Uh, it was so meaningful to me as I got it before I was a comedian and it's just beautiful looking through it. I just changed carpet in my office. So I had to move all my books out and I was leafing through it. Uh, three quarters of them are gone now. Wow. Yeah. Like as passed. in passed. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't sure if it was like just left. Or no, whatever. no. They, yeah, that, that have passed. And, but there is that thing to your point of like, they're all different. Jerry Lewis, uh, Jackie Mason, Lily Tomlin and their paths could not be more different. Yeah. Com completely different. But there's this undercurrent that you so identify with just as a comedian. Like it doesn't matter that you didn't go play in the Catskills right. <laughs> and do, and you know, the Borscht Belt and do all this kind of stuff. You still have a little Jackie Mason in you. That's cool. It's I, it so took me weird. so long to even call myself a comic. I think that was part of it too. And, uh -huh. the, and there's, so many different types of us, especially yeah. now. Yeah. Oh, but there's yeah, comics especially. who like are out the gates. Here's my card. I'm a comedian and they've done two open mics. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and there's me who's like, I was on Conan, but I don't know. Should I say I do it professionally? Because <laughs> right. I'm still a cafe worker. And, you know, and it's like, yeah. that's annoying in its own way too. Both are annoying. Both are annoying, like but I'm worried that I was more that straight, way. Lady. <laughs> I know, but it was like, I, yeah. It's annoying. Did you dog ear any comics or you're not that person? In that book. In that book? No, it was all of them. Yeah. It was all of them. I, and, and here's the other, this is me being jaded. I'm yeah. like, who wants to hear my process? You know what I mean? <laughs> and yet I'll have moments on shows with young kids because yeah. I am the kid sister of three girls. Mm -hmm. So I have this kid sister mentality. And there's still comics I love and I look up to and right. I get to be around them like I said. Yeah. Like, That's not lost on me. I'm like, this is cool. Yeah. I still try to remain calm, but I'm like, this is cool. Yeah. Well, sometimes when I show up to a random show I've agreed to through a random email, Yeah. some of those Young comics are like, you're my favorite comic. I know. And I'm like, you're like <laughs> who are you talking to? Yeah, right, I know. You know. It's a weird thing. It's a weird to kind of take I'm a stock senior. of it. Yeah, yeah, right, exactly. And then you're just like a fifth-year senior, sixth-year senior, seventh-year senior, eighth-year senior. Yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's so uh, nice. Your special was so good. Thank you. I, You know, I I do this serious XM show which you were on right yeah. when it came out and uh we, we we digest a lot of specials yeah a I lot bet. of specials <laughs> I don't know which how is you cool do it. it is cool but it's you don't get through yeah most of them mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean same it's, it's as yeah. a comic like the reality is like sometimes yeah well taste there's no argument but right, also right. just to get through it and then there's others that you turn on and it just before you know it it's You've gone through the whole thing. It mm -hmm. was such a delight. Thank and that's you. what yours was. It Thank was you. so good. Thank you. That I means hope, a lot to me. I hope you got your, I'm sure, I don't even have to ask. I know the response from you just knocking Thank around you. and running into people. It, it, there was no doubt. It Thank wasn't, you. It wasn't a maybe. Thank you. <laughs> it Thank was you. really great. Thank you. I Yeah. I've, I mean, yours are amazing too. Yeah, I think right. we... It's true. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I love your style. I love your the the details you use. So many great 
descriptors. <laughs> like, you know, there's there's something yeah. that you can probably. I don't know. I'm, I don't know if we're necessarily similar. Sometimes I'm har- I have a mm-hmm. hard time saying what I am. Yeah, of course. Like you know, when somebody's like, "What do you do?" I'm like, "I don't know. Watch it and tell yeah. me." <laughs> the worst is when you do an interview and they're like, "So you're promoting your thing in Denver?" And they're like, "So what can we? What can fans expect yeah. on Friday?" <laughs> I, I know. I was know. like, "I don't know. I never know the answer." <laughs> yeah. I mean, in fact, I used to cling to things from ages ago. One time, somebody was said I was like Stephen Wright or something. Uh, this was like back like you know, yeah. 2000. Yeah. Who knows? seven but um anyway i i don't know it seems like maybe we have mm. things that we will probably like about each other's too yeah yeah for, that for sure you know like absolutely the way we like work or talk yeah or, like, put something together right well phrase because i'm still precious about my material and i'm not saying it's so mm-hmm. great and i'm not the person who's like you listen to my album front to back you can't <laughs> skip tracks you better sit there you know yeah 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 i'm not like precious in that way it's it's uh you know in a the cheesy way of saying it is like a special special. Like I've yeah. prepared this for you. I worked hard on it and it has a, you know, yeah. something I've put together for you to present now, not yeah. to be like chopped right. up and clipped and be like, please like me. Oh, you I know. know. That's I the know. tough part, but that is hard. I, I feel like, um, I like, I'm old school in that way. And that I would like to keep making specials. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that are an hour. Yeah. You know? Like, <laughs> right. sometimes I'm like, I'll, I'll click through somebody else's, and, uh-huh. I, and I'm like, well, that flew by, and it flew by because it wasn't an hour. It was 36 <laughs> minutes, and I'm like, did they get paid the same, or what's happening here? <laughs> I, know, <right? laughs> exactly. I thought we were working hard. I'm, I'm confused, and I will stop soon. I'd love to stop soon, but I won't. <laughs> I know. There is that element for sure. But there's, uh, there's here's the thing that was, has been on my mind, because I'm going to, do my next one in the summer awesome and you did one show yeah you did one show <laughs> yes and Risky business. <laughs> yeah but there's something so cool about I, I mean why not one show yeah like why do you gotta do two shows yeah i felt a little like um you know roller coaster like white knuckling it yeah but i also you know I ended up cutting out at least 15 minutes Mm -hmm. and part of that was at the beginning. So it's sort of like, I don't, not because I looked super nervous, but I was like, meh, let's get in. Like, yeah, you see the very, very beginnings jokes and then I cut out a little chunk and Uh then I get back into it. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Just cause nerves, it read like a nerves for you you saying yourself. I, it was more actually, I just uh, didn't think that material was ready. Uh Uh-huh. So I cut, I cut two chunks that I feel like I could work on and get better. The first chunk I haven't worked on and I dropped Right, that's a and tell. the second chunk um, is I, I I've been doing this thing lately where because mm-hmm. I do have a new hour now yeah. and on the road early show I end on this landlord story of mine that's like fifteen minutes and sometimes I go how did I do that yeah. like back in the day I can't <laughs> imagine like telling a fifteen minute story yeah and then a late show I end on the chunk I cut from the, from the special uh-huh. which um, is basically about porn like right <laughs> porn addiction somebody's yeah dating somebody with that. Right. It's a... A man freaked out on me in Philly on Saturday. And I only got the information later. That's a whole nother thing, but it's fine. What? It was just sort of like, I don't, somebody messaged me on Instagram and was like, I was in the crowd. I said, oh, I couldn't even hear because it was such at the tail end. Of like your... Like the closer. Your closing. That, yeah, late show and someone Saturday. someone chirped up? A guy's yelling. Yelling? Yeah, yelling. But I couldn't hear and I, and I was actually kind of like, screw this guy. I'm just going to... I'm so close to the end of the joke. Yeah. I'll just kind of finish it, finish the show. It was so close. And then I go, "Was is that guy who was yelling still here? No sound from him. And some girl goes, Yeah. Like, <laughs> so I'm like, okay, was he yelling at her? Uh-huh. Were they in a fight? I don't know what's going on. And then I said something like, okay, what was that about? And mm-hmm. then nothing, still nothing. So it's just interesting. Just yelling in the middle of your Yeah, he joke? wanted to like sort of interrupt and stuff, but it's like, uh-huh. uh, if you listen to the joke and let me finish, like, yeah. I, anyway, oh, the, the person worst. online said that he was yelling about me being anti-male. Oh, God. Yeah, that, that's what she... I don't know if it was, God. I don't know the gender of the person who told me because they're, it's just a handle, <laughs> but they said that person was yelling about you being anti-male. Oh. I'm like, I have so many amazing men in my crowd that are laughing with me and I love men and yeah, it just makes me be like, what place uh, do you have to be to be yelling out? Well, I think that's, you're anti. yeah, I, and he, I, I'm sure, oh, something agreed. It just, it just goes to show where I'm sort of like, cool. So, and, and uh-huh. she said it was an older white gentleman who she just described, or again, I yeah. don't know if it was a she or he who was telling me this online. It happened earlier. Today. Yeah. Point is it was an older white guy 
angry about you being anti-male. And I said, interesting, because when I addressed him to speak about it at the end and gave him the chance, he didn't want to say anything. Yeah, he just, just wanted to kind of interrupt me. Right. And it's like, okay, well, I gave you the chance yeah. to have it, even though this isn't a conversation. I, you've paid for me to entertain you. <laughs> yeah. um, but I also think back to all the decades where wives sat next to their husbands while they got called battle axes and ball and chain and uh-huh. right. <laughs> for decades yeah so i think maybe take a joke if you if you can handle yeah. it well Cause you're so like you act like everybody else is so sensitive and a snowflake and yet yeah uh, it's just a joke it is such a part of the culture now it's bizarre yeah and i'm just like obviously i'm gonna be somewhat defensive because it's my material and i don't ever come from like i'm not saying ever i've written things out of frustration and probably malice Uh um (laughs) sure but this particular thing is coming from my own experience Mm -hmm. and i'm sharing it and a lot of people are in the audience relating and i'm trying to as a comic i as i've grown and learned Mm -hmm. and when i see other comics i i believe to be doing it not how i think they should Uh which is if you and i are going to sit here and we're writing jokes about this wine bottle yeah one of us better turn it right (laughs) toward us Uh, because what if it doesn't say wine on the front and it's maple syrup (laughs) like right like look walk all the way around the subject Uh yeah and i'm just sort of like i promise you i'm thinking of you when i'm writing it right right i promise (laughs) (laughs) it is so it is such a bizarre thing to yelling out like you're in it like you're you you being anti-male was when you walked up and when he bought the ticket and saw your name yeah he was like what is she about like you know what i mean like that you didn't gin that up no in the last couple of minutes of your set no this guy is carrying that into the like why did you come like why are you here this is all about i just had an eye exam with this new eye doctor he's like he took me to the side at the end because i have this condition on my eye and i'm like really looking for answers yeah and he took me to the side and i thought he was gonna give me some cornea tip or something and he's like when are comedians gonna be able to just just say what they will about about (laughs) about about about, uh their heritage i was so fun like when you make fun of jewish people and they make fun of italian people and they make fun of black people and they make fun of puerto rican people it was a celebration we all celebrated each other when's it coming back i don't know when can i see out of my eye I should be like, um, get out your iPhone and scroll to 2027. It's actually March 19th, yeah. so it's going to be a couple of years. But be, we're getting keep an there. Eye. We're getting keep an there. eye on the calendar. And I'd like to keep an eye as well. If you fix my eye. <laughs> <laughs> right. was, it a, was it a white guy, doctor, who he was saying it? Yeah, he was an older, an older white guy. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's the interesting thing. It's sort of like, no, uh, you know, I get how there can be some frustration, right? I, yeah. I, I I'm not over here saying that there hasn't been any change and it's Uh business as usual and white men are, you know, not dealing with any sort of pushback. Right. right? But I'm also thinking too, it is an invitation to go, Oh, interesting. Like I didn't, I hadn't really had to step outside myself as much. So why is it easy for me to hear all these jokes about all these different cultures that we're celebrating? Yeah. Why is it easier for me to hear it? Uh Or why is there, why is there nothing off the table for me to joke about? Mm-hmm. Is it because nothing's personally harmed me? Right. So I can joke about anything? Like yeah, I can, yeah. you know, uh, whatever. Yeah. Molestation joke. I can tell that. Yeah. It's like, okay, well, well, could you still tell it in the same way if you were molested? Mm-hmm. Like, and mm-hmm. again, telling a molestation, sorry to make it about molestation. Yeah. But telling that doesn't isn't a requirement you need to have survived it right but again it's sort of walking around it it's giving one, you a, walk around it once or twice yeah <laughs> you know yeah before yeah. you're because otherwise you're doing first thought joke mm-hmm. and that's not what i what i would want to pay to see right because exactly. i could get that online or from my coworker. yeah or from a child <laughs> right not someone i've paid to entertain me <laughs> i know that happened to me with language when uh when people are like, why don't you swear that much? Like, did you, is, you always get that asked, like, why don't you curse? Are you a clean comic? And, and it really, I, I could picture her, her little face. I was walking through Washington Square Park as a young comic, and there was this nine-year-old girl, maybe eight-year-old girl, going, fuck this, fuck that, fuck this, fuck that. And I'm like, all right, if she, if we're at the point in the culture mm-hmm. where that word, that badass word, is coming out of the mouth of a third grader, why should it be in my act? My act should be a more special place yeah. than 
just to say it for the sake of saying sure. it. That's what she's doing. Yeah. You know what I mean? In context, whatever. Right. But yeah, it's, it's there should be something thoughtful about all of it is, yeah. is the point. I, I hear that. Yeah. And all, and, and um, no, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. I, re- I feel like somebody, maybe it was, because my mom went early days was like, or what would she say? Pop, you heart didn't need to cuss. You know, if I, if I did cuss early in my career. <laughs> yeah. And in, in my head, I kept being like, I wonder, what, I don't know. I'm sure he cusses this is in his daily life, mom. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think it was probably Regan or something that said there's so many other words in the, in the, in the, yeah. in the dictionary. Why? That's why, you know? yeah. Something that's like why, that. like, you have great turns of phrase in, in your, in your act. That's why I love words. I love reading. I love, like, anything that you, it's, an interesting way to speak. Yeah. And we were talking about like, two things. My daughter studied in Paris uh, one semester, and she learned after being immersed in it, they don't have fun with their language. She really? said it's beautiful. and there's But they don't have the, in the American language, and it, and it really lends itself to humor. We have so many turns of phrase that are like just – a kerfuffle or mm. a, a boondoggle mm. or a, I mean, there's so many things, ways of saying everything. Yeah. It really is pretty remarkable. It's, there's something just so great about it. Yeah. That we don't, that other languages don't have it. And it's like, well, yeah, there are so many other words for all this stuff. Right. Why not populate? And, and make up your own fun stuff or like, you know, I don't know, whenever there is something that I've said that people will repeat to me or whatever uh-huh. it was, I'm always like, I don't know if it's pride or yeah. proudness, be, feeling proud. Um, but I'm like, that's so cool. Yeah. I mean, yes, there's repeating a joke, mm-hmm. but like just the way I said something or a term, yeah, I'm like, oh, yeah. I love that. Just make something up. And yeah. I, and I also think too, like, obviously nowadays the internet is so vast it, i you'll sometimes question like did i make that up or i don't uh-huh. know like you think i thought i've made something up and then right maybe i i didn't yeah i don't know i've been disappointed by that the smallest one i ever remember was just like i thought i thought of feral godmother uh-huh. but then i googled <laughs> it and it's like somebody's etsy store and i was like all right oh really <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's <laughs> funny fairy godmother. but um but there's a lot of phrases and it, and i don't know if we're if we're going to start losing it because I was saying some, Oh, I was watching a movie or something and someone said, uh, I'm going to need this on the double. I was like, Oh, I haven't heard that in a long, yeah. like I haven't heard that on the double. Yeah. And there's, and my wife's pointed out like, there's a lot of that. That's she uses a lot of them from her parents. Like yeah. funny little phrases. Yeah. My grandma would say like busier than a, a feather merchant in a hen house. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. It's like I hope that the digitization of everything doesn't diminish. Yeah. We I are know, definitely it's losing morphing that. and changing because mm-hmm. they'll be like, this is a silly example. I remember I dated a younger guy for a couple years. It was a comedian just because I refused to be happy. And <laughs> a he, dark comedian. He, he was. Do you want a fake cigarette? I mean, a real cigarette. But do you want to just pretend we're smoking? Yeah, I love cigarettes. I do too. Do you They're smoke They're so them? good. Yeah. Um, I love a Capri, the tiny thin ones. Oh, yeah. It? That's a good one. Yeah, I mean. Oh, you seem so much smarter right now. Thank you. <laughs> sexier, too. Who was this comedian? Was the, you know, oh, yeah, without younger. A name, younger. Uh, younger. And, and honestly, um, we had so much fun together. Great, lots of great times. Yeah. Uh, but I think I had a joke that was like, he, I'm haha. he's more LOL. Uh-huh. Uh, and and many other things he taught me, like memes and yeah. um, and I think I the joke was like, and I taught him how to have sober sex. Um, but one of the things that I even thought of in this realm was small S M O L. It's like again, I'm probably going to explain it wrong, uh-huh. but there's just like little different ways of saying things in terms of phrase yeah. that are like like oh, it means cute, I think, and mm-hmm. you're like well, oh, a small like a small kitten or whatever. Right, right. And it's like cute, and but that to me yeah. is like. The, the, the new transition in this internet there's like internet, yeah. internet language there's slang of course too there's always been mm-hmm. um what am i trying to say i can't think of it like when, uh, just uh the letters are representing the why can't uh, I think an acronym it? thank you <laughs> uh yeah there's always been that i guess yeah of course mm-hmm. but i think that's even more oh yeah oh, because for example for sure today when when the person replied it was a o w g O W G. Old white guy. Oh. I, had to, I had to Google it. I had to Google it. Yeah, I have to Google those all the time. Yeah. Quickly without my daughter seeing me. Yeah, because they're both in college. They're both in college. 
But that kind of does keep you connected. At oh, least yeah. To... I just found out that uh, Dairy Girls is cool. Yes. Yeah. I wasn't sure. Like someone suggested and I was like, I don't know. Because, mm-hmm. you know, as an O. W G. I know it took me as, as long as to do it as, as, as well. An, as an OWG, I don't want to just <laughs> jump into Dairy Girls without knowing that I'm in a good territory. Yeah. So I checked in, and they're like, "Yeah, it's a we we endorse it." <laughs> <laughs> Stamp of approval. I have been lately asking young kids like what they're watching because it is interesting mm-hmm. to me. I yeah. Like, I think I talked to a freshman, maybe. Oh, maybe she was in yeah. seventh grade on Sunday. They're walking through the park in Philly in Rittenhouse Square. I was with my friend having bagels. Mm. And uh, whatever, somebody walked by, they knew. We ended up talking to her and her mom. Uh, she was in seventh grade. But yeah. I asked her what she watched. She gave me some interesting answers. And it was in the Netflix realm. Uh-huh. Whereas before, when I was home in Ohio shooting that special, I asked, I visited my high school and we were trying to get some B-roll. And I asked, I think, seventh or eighth graders what they watch. Mm-hmm. First of all, I mean, I'm like, I'm not scary. Maybe <laughs> they're just all shy. They were like... <laughs> I'm just sort of like, I'm doing everything I can here to be endearing. Um, and, yeah. But their answer was essentially sort of like some anime answers and more in the realm of YouTube and, and I guess TikTok. Some of them yeah. said, oh, I don't watch TikTok. And uh-huh. I was like, okay. Yeah. It is an interesting thing. There is this, I I mean, it's really why comedy doesn't have real good shelf life. Yeah. It's so of the some moment. Some holds up. Like that's some, the cool part. I'm trying to think. Some, but it's... I'm trying to think of a really old one I watched recently, and I'm not going to think of it. As but a I, film I, or a stand-up? It was a stand-up. And I remember, and I can't, it's so stupid that I can't remember who it was, but I was like, okay, this is not holding up. And then another person, so I was like, I'm impressed. It still, yeah. it still works. Yeah. But there is definitely, I mean, my kids, they're, you know, 20. Yeah. We'll average it out, the two of them. Mm-hmm. And... There's a different pace. There's a different thing. They're mm-hmm. thinking different things. Like I could hear the joke that they're telling each other, and there's it's informed by their life up until that point. Yeah, that we're not a part of. Mm-hmm. Like there's it, it's a there's a shorthand. Right. There's and I can hear it and know why it's funny, but not feel it the same way that yeah. they do. And when they share it with my nieces and nephews. Yeah. It's interesting. I know. Yeah. I know. I was, I'm like, is this the whole, like, am I? are we having the Elvis rock and roll moment here? <laughs> like, kids stay away from that garbage? Uh-huh. Or is the world, like, like it, it's always happening, every new generation, everything thing new from mm-hmm. from vinyl to CDs to, you know, yeah, yeah, digital. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or will it eventually just be so far off, we're spinning off the axis? And, and it'll just, yeah. Because I'm not like, evolve. yeah, I don't know. It makes me wonder because I, I, I wasn't, like I mentioned earlier, I, I didn't do, watch a ton of stand-up before I started. Mm-hmm. Or I wasn't like a student of it. I love funny movies. And then when I started, I really didn't watch it because I was terrified of like stealing somebody's persona or jokes. Mm-hmm. It wasn't until four years ago or something I watched Richard Pryor for the first time. It was the oh, yeah. Netflix one uh, that put up the 1979 in mm-hmm. Long Beach. But that, I was so, it was actually, I'm so glad I watched it. Yeah. It's not that I didn't respect him before, and I know he had plenty of personal struggles and things that were tough in his personal life. And yeah. And wasn't an angel. But I, I was like, oh, I get it. Like, I, I see why he's considered one of the greats. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. the other interesting thing was just, like, not a lot of change. You know, he, start, he was talking about police brutality, which was mm-hmm. interesting. And, and the, my other takeaway from it. Sorry, not like you asked. Um, was <laughs> there is a R joke in it, a rape joke. And uh-huh. it's not from the perspective of a rapist, which is sort of the twist. Because uh-huh. <laughs> nowadays, so many <laughs> comics are like, well, why can't I do it? It's like, well, why are you thinking like a rapist? <laughs> uh, you know, like yeah. I'm not over here telling jokes about how I hide the bodies and lie. You know, <laughs> <Right>. um, <laughs> I, if I, that's my persona or something and I'm dressed up in, I don't know, a cape. Sure. Uh, but it is, that's the interesting part. This, this whole idea of like the subject matter, the perspective you're telling it from mm-hmm. and what's off limits and why mm-hmm. or why they're being like edgelord about it. Right. Right. Did you, so what are you saying though? Were you bumped by it? But no, no. I was just like, was... I was like, yeah, you can tell a rape joke as long as it's not like, Right. From the perspective of a rapist. Right, right, Why are you right, so right. hell-bent on telling rape jokes? Yeah. And then secondarily, 
from yeah. the perspective of you doing it and right. having us not not question you a little right <laughs> yeah or being well, surprised just, that there's any question joke. yeah it's like okay why are you thinking like that i mean i guess yeah. you can share with us your perverse thoughts yeah i watched that documentary on netflix about uh it's like the greatest night of music and pop I've history. I've heard that's good. Yeah, it's really good. About We Are the World mm -hmm. and putting it together. There was an award show and then they all went off and uh, and recorded that in one night you know, with all these great artists. And the two things about the, the Elvis moment of they, first of all, getting that level of artists, they were all legendary. Yeah. You know, like Ray Charles, Bob Dylan, <laughs> Lionel Richie, Michael Jackson, Cindy Lauper, uh, Dionne Warwick. It was just like, yeah. oh my God, I mean, giants. And then they release it and they play it on radio stations all around the mm -hmm. world at once. And then they have these giant concerts with these just huge. And two things, two questions for you. Do we have the giants to put that together if we have a cause that like, do we have the giants around anymore that can pull that off? Like, what's who's the list of the great current artists? And two, are we so fragmented now that only a segment of the population would be into listening to the? Because we're so siloed now. Yeah. Right. Like everybody's like, what used to be music is now music and television and film mm -hmm. and comedy. They're so segmented, and you could have someone huge like Sebastian. And nobody else knows who he is. Yeah. You, like, it's true. the only time to live. We live in a weird time where you have to ask, are they famous? Right. That's true. Right? Uh, yeah. Okay. And also, I've heard that about a comic. doesn't really matter who, but a very popular comic. Someone said their fans aren't stand-up comedy fans. They're fans of that person. Right. So that, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. another interesting take on the same thing that you're saying. Mm -hmm. I'm like, do we have the Giants... Do we have the giants? If if we're there's a famine going on in uh, in mm -hmm. Hawaii, and <laughs> we're gonna have a big fundraiser. I mean, who's gonna who are we gonna bring into the room? I think it's rel it's more relative now. I guess I'm having trouble answering. Taylor it's Swift like will eight, be there. Eight, Taylor, Beyonce. We have like mm -hmm. we have those big names. Yeah, Olivia Rodrigo. Mm. But I'm also like, there's also someone named. I don't want to get it wrong, but like Madison Beer, I think, who has like 13 million followers. Yeah. Like it was sometimes on Spotify, they'll give you a list. And I was like, oh, who's yep. this? And I look, I was like, I don't know who this is. I think there was a song on the playlist. I was like, oh, that's fun. Yeah. But again, it's like there's so many of those. Right. Someone I don't know who has 13, 20, 50 million 200 million. Followers. Bad Bunny, right, Joe? Oh, so many. Bad Bunny. Do really? you know Bad Bunny? I, I have heard of it, but to be honest with you, I can't, I don't. I'm sure I've enjoyed, he's, he's but I can't say gi gigantic, and so many people don't know who Bad yeah. Bunny is. So <laughs> yes, so crazy. Okay, so in so many ways, like the gatekeeper was fired, mm -hmm. and uh, there's uh, the, everybody's just running in. Yeah, you can just over the walls, run up onto the stage, and take the mic. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So I guess yeah, it's just one of those things where I'm like. I think it would yeah. just be so relative because yeah, I don't, I don't know. Well, because the way think about the Super Bowl when it was, it was uh, yeah. Usher and all the. Some people were like, "Who are these old people?" Right, and it's like it's Usher, <laughs> yeah, and Ludacris, yeah. You know, what's interesting the way just having you go through it is that the talent's still there, mm -hmm. but the way we're digesting it, we don't digest it all together because of the gatekeepers. Yeah. Like, we all knew who Ray Charles was right. because they deemed Ray Charles as the one for this time. Yeah. Bah, bah, bah. Now it's like what you're saying. Yeah. It's like there's all this great stuff, but we all aren't. And it's still we're not happening. We're not holding the same menu. They still are the claw in a lot of ways. They, or at least they can try to be. Mm -hmm. Like, they pick, they pluck up the person. They put their, them through hair and makeup and wardrobe. <laughs> yeah. And then they give them a show. Uh-huh. <laughs> so it's like, that still happens. Yeah. And I'm like, who... And there's also pay to play. Like, mm -hmm. and, well, there's paid yeah. awards, of course. And then there's, like... Yeah. And there's the person who's paying... F there's the person... There's... Sorry. There's a person who's paying six grand a month or something mm -hmm. for PR. Right. And there's the person that works for, that worked for them. Yeah. And we know who they are. And then there's a person who paid that and we don't know who they are. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't want to be that person and be 18 grand poorer. Yeah. Because it is a minimum of three months, you know? Yeah. And the reason I remember this is because 
I, we don't need to get into the details of it. I'm sure you've experienced similar things, but it was like, yeah. I had lots of people involved in a past special, plenty of power players. Yeah. And they're asking me to hire PR and I'm going, you guys are, yeah, oh, aren't you oh, going to do I'm it? Gonna, I need to do it. <laughs> yeah, aren't you going to do it? I was just sort of like, okay, wow. Yeah. I thought so that's this... how I knew it was like a minimum of mm -hmm. that. And I didn't end up doing it. I think they charged me like a lawyer, like 50 bucks for a phone call. It's right. It's and then crazy. another friend of mine went with them later who uh -huh. we don't know. Yeah. And who was successful in their own ways, of mm -hmm. course, and talented. But when I was supposed to do something with them, they were like, oh, they think that you don't like them, that company. I was like, uh, well, <laughs> yeah. I don't love them. <laughs> right. <laughs> I think it's insane <laughs> to pay yeah. that much money. I mean, I, when it's you insane. don't come from money, it's tough to wipe your butt with it. Oh, 100%. 100 percent and i'm always and then, do, and then to not see results yeah it's just i know maddening. and then you're like you're and then you're bitter <laughs> yeah right yeah i had a uh i had a book come out my most recent book i have three um and it came out and it was the writer's strike so there was a lot of uh all the shows shut down mm -hmm. that i wanted to run around and talk about my book but just like this is news to you but like scraping and just trying to get everything and go where you can and try to push this thing for months and i did all of it and then had a book signing at barnes and noble and walked in and did not see my book i'm like why isn't that why is my book not like at the entrance like we're having a book signing with me and rain wilson tonight yeah. like why isn't my book there and i was listening to david sedaris talk about it and he's like he had a young author on. He's like this young, very talented. He's just great. But the publishing company isn't paying to have their book put in the front of the thing. And so like all of this press and all this heart, blood, sweat, and tears to do all the right things to get it. What does that matter? Yeah. If your publisher isn't producing your book and push and paying off all of these places right. to highlight it and make it look like I it's know. the book. I know it's frustrating. It's, it's such garbage, right? And the person who paid for the PR or, and it worked for them isn't like, and just so you know, I didn't do this alone. Yeah, it wasn't miraculous. Yeah. But even paying, They're like it's amazing, I'm here. But it's even like, paying for the nice. PR, you pay for the PR, and there's another component of just having the physical book show up in all these places. So I paid for all this PR and have people call up and go, "I was just at the thing at the at the Barnes and Nobles in Clifton and." You, they don't have your book. They didn't have it at all? <laughs> they didn't have it at all. That's crazy. Yeah. I can't believe they didn't have it at all. At all. And that was at the book signing? No. Okay, no, there God. they did. Thank that was God. here. That was here at the in LA. Okay, good. Yeah. But yeah. It's just, but that's, that's insane. Yes, it is. It's frustrating. I know. I think there's a little more um, gratitude being spread around by folks. I'm not saying people never did it, mm -hmm. but there was always that sort of... I'm the star, director, creator, writer. You're welcome, you know? Uh-huh. And now I think, and I could be wrong, yeah. it seems like more people are like, I couldn't have done this without this, 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 this. Right, Cause like, right, right. Because even at Oscars old days, it was like, and I like to think, um, my wife and this, and then they say like four names that like, yeah. you can assume were like their agents. And uh -huh. like, good night. Um, but now people are very much like the crew and this. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a, a positive shift. And I think the yeah. shift I've noticed but yeah. it used to be part of the superhero mentality and I'm the star and the I did this one. on my own and here I am. Right. When How would you be? So many. If you get your Oscar, mm -hmm. I don't think you're thinking that many people. No, I'm going to go. I'd like to thank Tom Papa <laughs> for putting this Oscar into existence. <laughs> and then I'm going to get out a cigarette. I could breathe. <laughs> that would be cool. Yeah, I never, just you know, smoke it until they play. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Just thank one person and then just smoke. Why is she saying anything? <laughs> until the music plays. I like that. And I and then I'll look at the camera. And go, <laughs> I'm available for hire. <laughs> and then march off. <laughs> um, yeah, what would you say? I would say, I don't know. I I would love I there's no way to do it, but I was thinking like what what was Paul Giamatti going to say? Oh, did he not win? He didn't win. Okay. He won the Golden Globe. He was great. So did he you, was did great. You like the holdovers? I did. Yeah. Because I have a weird eye too. Oh well, now. 
<laughs> but I was thinking like, what do you got going on in there? What's weird about it? A little, I have this, um, blurry vision, a uh, caricatonus. Okay. Where it's like a thinning of your cornea. Fine. And at a certain point, um, some fluid rushed in. And so I have like a little smudge on my, yeah, on my, on this eye. Okay. Like a little. And is it affecting your vision? No, they, they, I'm a kind of a, um, anomaly, a miracle. Mm. <laughs> they keep saying, my last eye doctor was called someone. Uh, Come take a look at this. Was what he said to his assistant. You got to see this. And then this guy was saying kind of the same thing. He's like, I can't believe you see so well with that on your eye. <laughs> but the sm where the smudge ended up is just off okay. of what you really need to see through your, of your pupil. So, so that's positive. So that's positive. But yeah, I that's guess. frustrating. I've had a couple of little skin things happen to me where I, it's just it w used to. It bothered me initially, and I'm just sort of like, well, that's on me forever now. <laughs> like on the tops of my feet, I have almost like, they, they go in and out, but they're sort of like patchy. Uh -huh. Kind of kind of looks like a rash or whatever, but uh -huh. it's just, anyway, I f it's called like granular annuloma. Uh -huh. And apparently, like, I guess it's like onset after maybe a virus, so COVID. Right. And afterwards, it kind of showed up. Oh, interesting. One of my feel like teammates um, was being really annoying for a while and was like, yeah, ringworm. And I'm like, I've been to the doctor. <laughs> I've been to three. Uh, stop saying that. It's very like, um, yeah. take me back. Who was to saying that? One of my teammates. <laughs> yeah, right how'd there. it go? How did the, uh, how did the field hockey go? Well, I that, supported you. I know. I bought the jersey. Thank you. And I, I, I you're the best. You were amazing. Thank I was you. so inspired. Thank I you. couldn't believe you were. That was the, the Pan Am Continental Cup in Argentina in December. Right. And we got silver to Argentina. Nice. Who was the home, home country. I hate Argentina. <laughs> <laughs> They're good. They're very good. They are good. Um, was it close? We did. We beat them once in the tournament. Nice. They beat us in the end. Ah. Yeah. Um, but they are very good. At the How'd end, you we play? trade jerseys. I will say. I want to give myself a B plus. All right. Yeah. Because that was in the middle of, I couldn't believe you were going off to play. Like I you know. were in the middle of your life. I know. <laughs> and you're like, I'm going to the Pan Am. I know. <laughs> and the World Cup is coming up in October uh -huh. in Cape Town, South Africa. And I just trained with my master's team. They all came to the Philly show because they're all East Coasters. Oh, ah, cool. So my coach came, my coaches nice. came, a bunch of my teammates we trained together on Saturday morning. Uh -huh. I did like a Turo car rental thingy. Yeah. Drove to Collegeville, PA, trained with them. Whoa. There was like goats up on a field. And um, then drove back. They came to my show that night, Saturday early. I had this cra you, you, crazy heckler that like ruined the show. Not oh ruined God. the show. It was like, they were like, that was amazing. Oh, you dealt with that. You're the best. You know, they yeah, were very they love that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was more like when a doctor brings their kid to work and instead of like a routine exam, it's like open heart surgery and they're like, whoa, and you're like, that's not how this normally goes. Right. Um, yeah. But, I, I had a neighbor that came to one of those kind of shows. Yeah. And on the way home, he was like, is it like that every night? <laughs> Thankfully, no. So you went off and practiced with the team and then drove back and then did the show? Two. Jeez Louise. Friday too. How strong are you? You always been I'm really getting, strong. I'm getting back. Like I will say this. Speaking of my little sugar thing, uh -huh. my, I I am kind of black and white. My my, it's almost like I'm getting in shape and I'm fit, or like let's let go, baby. <laughs> <laughs> um, I kind of need like a little dangling carrot, uh -huh. you know, which you is motivate, playing yeah. field hockey. So, so yeah, but just like you know. You can't prepare for late night television except for being on late night television. Right. How are you going to get reps in late night television? So it's yeah. sort of just like, right. it's a bad comparison, I suppose. But like, I'm going to work out when I'm playing the game. Mm -hmm. And yet, I need to do more. And I did to train for Pan Ams. I'm running outside of it. I'm training. I'm lifting. Okay. And on the road, I'm on a freaking hotel treadmill. Right. So I did it, what I needed to do to not embarrass myself in our country. <laughs> but then I let go. I was like... I was in the holidays. I was in hibernation. Yeah. But I will say this training this last weekend was a, and, and oh, for some of my teammates up. too, it was a wake up call. Yeah. 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 Are your teammates, I mean, this isn't like, uh, people aren't making a living off of no. field hockey. So no, I mean, we were, they're paying. all squeezing it in. Yeah. yeah you're we're paying. paying. Yeah. Like, or through you you're and other supported by my t-shirt. Exactly. Purchase. And we were. And we truly were like, yeah. we were one of the only teams that got extra help like that. Oh, that's great. So, um, so everyone was so grateful. Yeah. Like everyone, for my t-shirt. Well, for you, everybody was specifically <laughs> kind of thinking you did, uh, 
did their what's so what's next is so uh tryouts are may 4th and 5th for the world cup are you gonna go to the olympics i don't that's the part where i go i don't get it because here's the thing sometimes people were like oh you're the women's um u.s field hockey team is like well we're the master's team like if i were on the u.s women's team i'd be like 19 and just out of duke you know but we're 35 it's the women's 35 and up team got it you have to be in the 35 to 40 range and then there's another team that's 40 to 45 45 to 50 really yeah and it's the master's program so we go to all these tournaments represent the u.s and it's like a continuation of the sport Mm -hmm. for people who are decrepit decrepit but skilled yeah right yeah wow that's amazing so people who still want to play the game but um yeah aren't you know, you don't have to be 19. There's mm-hmm. plenty of talented players on the team that are older than that. But right on the U.S. women's team. But right. Do you ever see them play? I watch on my phone. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like I follow some of them. And, right. Um, they're cool. I mean, the, the yeah. game changed so much from when I started. I mean, I, it, when I got back at, into it in L.A., like. Yeah. I had grown up playing on grass Mm -hmm. with a wooden stick. I'm like a witch, you know? (laughs) So it was like when I showed up, I was like a relic. They're like, whoa, can we look at your stick? What what are they using? It's like a plastic stick. It's um, composite, like Uh some some of the Kevlar. There there is oftentimes a wood base still wrapped in Kevlar or whatever. (laughs) I don't even know, to be honest with you. You're showing up with like leather cleats. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) A mouth guard that's an old orange. (laughs) I'm just like... I, it was fun to get started, but then it made me realize how much has, ch- has changed. And even just yeah. playing on turf, I played a, I played in high school and then a little club in college, uh-huh. but not much. Is it much faster on oh turf? Oh my gosh, yes. Yeah. And there's no like bumps or gophers popping up you right. know, or <laughs> yeah. whatever. But wow. I was basically going off of basics. And, and it's cool how, how well my, my coach did teach me yeah. in high school for it to, to, to go. Because really, I'm really one of the only folks on the team that didn't play in college. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. I just get really low. <laughs> That's your plan? That's, That's your of, technique? That, that is like kind of one of my trademarks. It is? So you have good knees. I don't know about that. Sometimes they sound like plastic bags when I'm going upstairs. <laughs> crunching. That's funny. I always think that my ankles sound like uh, like tin cans. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you should get you know how sh- there's shorts that have like writing on the butt yeah you should get some that say just married <laughs> crunch 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 <laughs> um so you got a so when is the south africa thing october um october. early october and so you've got time that's the thing i still it's like i still have to try i definitely have time tryouts yeah. are in may yeah you make sacrifices like I'm in the Netflix is a joke fest, May 3rd. That's right. my show Friday at the cemetery. Right. It's like, okay, well, tryouts are Saturday and Sunday. Uh, if I'm going to get to Richmond, Virginia, I'm flying all day Saturday. Whoa. And I go right. To, I only do the Sunday morning training or tryout. Right. And then I fly back Sunday night. Jeez. And I'm paying for my hotel and my flight. I mean, I have points, so I'm going to use points, but. But still. I even wrote where I said, hey, could I, I could get a recommendation from my coach because I just trained with her. So she could, but I didn't train well. So, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying she wouldn't know or if I kept in touch and sent videos or whatever. Yeah. But she could maybe write me a recommendation. She's just like, yeah, I need to go to the trail. All right. But I could not make it. Mm-hmm. But if I do make it, then I need to keep training, yeah. get ready for October. And then probably raise more money and make you buy another shirt. How many players on a team? How many How many slots? We travel with 13, but that's two dropped out because of one got shingles last minute. Mm. Dash. And. We got to get that vaccine. Couldn't come. And then um, one other person, I can't remember, I feel badly, um, but also couldn't come. So we were down. Oh, you were? The the older team had um, 15 they traveled with. Mm -hmm. But. Wow. I mean, think about it. You know how expensive um, flights are these days? Yeah, no kidding. So it's like, you know, you want to use your points or upgrade system or your status is ideal. But, you know, if you're springing for for a long flight and you know how it goes, you don't want to be so crunched up back there. Yeah. I don't don't even want to know. I'm guessing thousands and thousands of dollars if I were to not fly coach to Cape Town. (laughs) To Cape Town. I can't. I mean, my first Australia tour, I must have been 26 and I flew coach. Yeah. And I slept. No drugs. I know. I know. You know. I think well, I was on yeah. the aisle. I know. I watch these young. I watch these young people get on flights and they're heading to the back and like 
they, they're like I can tell on this last flight they they just were looking at what their seat was. At, they're on the plane and I was like, "What number are we?" And it's like, like I'm they're like, so new to travel. Yeah, that- I'm like, I have investigated yeah the entire plane i did research uh, i know where i'm going but they're just so you inspected y- it online they could sit back there fine and be ready to go i know it could wreck your week <laughs> yeah have you ever purchased compression socks <laughs> no but i live with someone who does <laughs> 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 being so jet lagged and flying like I, I don't know part of me goes when we were getting together and training this weekend i'm like are we doing it are we i was like i said i go because you're going yeah you know, it was very much like i thought we we're doing this together <laughs> right. yeah, we'll that's see. impressive that is really impressive we'll see if i even yeah keep me posted make it. yeah that'd be so cool i'm gonna play tonight you are yeah how often do you play in town if i choose hockey over stand-up three nights or three times a week. Three times a week. If I say yes to a show, it goes down from there. Right. Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday. How do you feel about doing shows in town? Um, I like it. Mm. Sometimes, I mean, certain places are hit or miss for me. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's good for me as a comic. It is good. It's humbling. You know? Yeah. It's good to play in front of there's people that don't pl- yeah, like you. Yeah, there's plenty of times where I'll be at the store and be like, this is not my people. Yeah. And then there are other times where I'm booked on a show that people kind of probably expect more of my brand of comedy and they have a great time and I and I yeah. have a great time. Yeah. Yeah, there is that thing. And it's, you know, you can get used to just being with your people. And that's right. That's not great either. No, and, I, and you can feel the difference. Yeah. And it doesn't feel good, but it's good for growth and it's good to check in and be like, okay, well, this... I'm. I definitely do feel like I don't need to hit with everybody. Yeah. I don't. Sometimes I. That's true. There is the the greater question of if I'm massively popular, am I still good? Uh, yeah. <laughs> but also, the, not that's not a knock to people who are playing stadiums and are massive. Like yeah, you yeah. can be great still and be doing that. Sure. So, yeah. My my question isn't r- real, but there is like that little feeling of like, do I want to appeal to everybody? Yeah. I don't want to be so niche. I can't sell tickets. But that's, I also don't know if I need to appeal to everybody. Well, that's what's weird about it is it's really, if you're being honest about what you want to write about and yeah. talk about, the other end of it really is out of your control. Yes. It's like yeah. you happen to be someone that appeals to a larger group. That's just the way it fell. Yeah. And that group changes. It's really, if you're just being honest to what you are, it's it's kind of like you can't all of a sudden then become like a marketing executive about it. No. (laughs) Right. I think that we have business people in our industry that that, that lean business over comedy for sure. Oh, yeah. And it works. Yeah. And I think that's like, sometimes I'm like, oh, I should take a page out of their book. And other times I'm like, I don't know. You don't have it in you. Yeah. No. But I always, I mean, another thing I constantly i'm saying Mm -hmm. is with a cigarette or without with Mm -hmm. your words are a magnet you know Mm -hmm. so don't be surprised what you have come toward you what do you mean like if i'm putting out this type of material that is Mm -hmm. i don't know right well, I'm trying to think of a good example. Then don't be surprised what shows up yeah. in your audience. Yeah. Yeah. Like there was that, I remember there was a, a time when there was a very popular radio show in New York mm-hmm. and pe- people wanted to do it. The Opie and Anthony show. Right. And people really, it was great. They had a, a lot of great comics on. It was a good thing to go do. And then a couple of people that popped off of it, it was all of a sudden the audience was like, whoa, wait, this, is, this isn't who I really play to. It was yeah. like a bit of a bro kind of a, you know, group that would show up. It's right. That, thing. that is like, interesting. Yeah. Even like doing something like America's Got Talent yeah. or whatever, you know, older example would be Bob Saget. When people go see him, they're so shocked. He's cussing. Yeah. Or yeah. Yeah. About, you know, yeah. sex stuff. Because they're like, wait, aren't you America's dad? You're right. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah. Like, that is interesting, like, what you attract or what people perceive you to be or what you're going to do. Yeah, and especially when you're starting out, like, I know that some people, you can tell, like, all of a sudden there's this um, right-wing, successful comedy Mm -hmm. division (laughs) that didn't exist before, and people can go on Gutfeld and Fox and 
do these kind of things. And yeah. you see these comics who they never talked like they were actually the opposite. Yeah. And now they're really preaching because they got a little success. Right. And it's the first success they get in their career. So they keep throwing red meat that way. Right. And then you're like, wait a minute. I knew you. And <laughs> yeah, when you weren't believing those things. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that is a that is obviously a weird moment. Even seeing somebody change how they talk, mm-hmm. or like you know, all of a sudden it's like, wait, <laughs> yeah. are you from New York? All of a sudden, you know, like oh, what's up? You know, like talking with a New York accent, it looks really heavy all of a sudden. You're yeah, like, hey, you need to be doing that. Yeah, um, yeah, I've seen that. It is. It's, it's, it's interesting. It, or whatever. I remember yeah. people being so like saying how there's there were certain country music artists that decided to go pop or otherwise you know like right, started right. a certain way or started in christian music and yeah like i guess i'll be a pop star yeah who's that comic that started out sounding like like it was a kind of a joke that he was doing um country songs hmm. he, and he had a, like a character and now he's like legit oh really yeah hmm. do you remember him joe no he was a he would he started out telling singing songs and it was kind of like tongue-in-cheek like country songs but like 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 kind of funny like kind of mocking it but he got so good at it that now he's like a legit he used to show up and like make kind of like like uh like sasha baron cohen would like show up and kind of piss people off but now he's like a legit country guy not larry the cable guy yeah larry the cable guy with the guitar not Rodney Carrington. Was his name like the country guy? No. Because I feel like there was a story about that person at Montreal a couple years ago. That they kind of uh, got in some oh, trouble. Oh, that guy who got in trouble, right. I don't know his name. Country, yeah. It's called like Country K- Steve or something. <laughs> yeah, and he went out and pissed everybody off. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I remember that guy. Oh, I'm spacing. He was on my podcast way back in the day. The country man? Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe... Just for fun, because you have so much energy, mm-hmm. you could do a character. You could be a different kind of character, also. You yeah, could have, maybe you could have Beth Stelling, but you could also be Barth Starling. Yes, and she's very into swishy pants and jumpsuits that you would work out in. <laughs> yeah, and wears her hair up, and her mouth is never closed. <laughs> Yeah, high bun right here for sure. I I, I really um, I used to do a character that would kind of like it, back in Chicago days of uh-huh. all the jokes I could never tell myself because they were just like kind of dumb. Yeah, and I I would do it on nights at our show on Sundays. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. <laughs> like we did that in New York. Yeah, something like what do I do at a party? <laughs> what do I do do that when I l- want to leave a party or something? The joke is essentially. <laughs> Take a dump in your dishwasher, flip it up, and put it to heavy duty. <laughs> Why didn't my brain even think of that? I think there was a Cialis, Cialis joke in there at one point. Yeah. Cialis pussy. It's funny. Cialis pussy. Because it was all dark. It was all like dirty stuff I wouldn't do. Right, exactly. We had that in, in New York when I was starting. It was me and uh, Kyle Dunnigan and uh, John Bush. And it was jokes that we would never tell, like stupid, dirty jokes. Mm -hmm. And we would write, it only lasts for a little while, but we would write together. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And then one of us would have to go up as Charlie (laughs) McGarnacle and tell those jokes. (laughs) That's so fun. Did you tap the notebook? Yeah, you could take the notebook up. Yeah, That's very fun. It was fun. The audience didn't think so, but we had a good time. (laughs) Gosh, I, I do love that moment with comics. I've had that a couple of times. Yeah. We like, I think it was probably a comedy <laughs> festival. It was a bunch of comics just had to write jokes, put them in a hat, and the host was reading them. Uh huh. And, and we're nearly barfing. Yeah. You know, uh, tears are streaming down our, our face. We're laughing so hard. And yeah. the, the crowd was like, <laughs> What are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. But there were, everybody seemed to write a joke about keeping a boner. And, or not being able to keep a boner. Like they were right. all just erection jokes over and over. And the guy reading him, it's like from first person. Yeah. So we're dying laughing. And this guy on stage is talking about not being able to keep yeah. a boner. There's just something so uh, deep in all of us that's just so sophomoric. Yes. Of course. It's the, it's the fun, yeah. uh, juvenile, childlike yeah. behavior. Yeah. I, the, uh, in that room. 
realm, the guy at the bagel shop, when I was did that character, mm -hmm. he was like, "You should do a joke about um, <laughs> about you know." I just love that setup. You yeah, should do yeah, a joke yeah. about. Yeah, yeah. It was about like cool, how cool ranch Doritos, but where 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 do all the horses from the Dork Ranch hang out? <laughs> killing over there it is working the joe's like it <laughs> what ben hoffman wheeler walker jr we, yes oh, wheeler walker yeah. jr okay i have heard of him but he had yeah. he had the ben hoffman show i think on yeah. Comedy central for a minute right and and the and, only sketch i remember was about texting and driving and he crashed uh-huh and then he was talking about he was texting about titties when he crashed right <laughs> and he, and so like i think like a computer has to speak for him now and it's like reading the text and it was like can i see your titties <laughs> it's funny it's funny and he started doing this yeah. wheeler walker as kind of like and he came to do my podcast and he, he said can you just address me as wheeler not as walker what's his name ben, ben hoffman ben. yeah and i was like yeah i'll I'll do it. And he was just starting it out. But now he's like selling legit. Wow. I didn't know what he was up to. I know Sean O'Connor, I feel like, wrote on that Ben Hoffman show, I think. Right. Which is how I was even introduced to him. But Right. Yeah. That's so it's not. Yeah. So I like this new character. What was the name of your character? Barth Starling. Barth Starling. Barth. <laughs> <laughs> There's got to be like. I, think. I, don't, I can't think of any other jokes. I would also do like a Shakira thing voice behind a shakira poster <laughs> you bring the poster <laughs> out yeah I would just stand behind it. something's happening in my throat it's the cigarettes you think yeah i'm sorry to do it to you <laughs> <They're already killing. laughs> what do you think you're going to put on the bread when you uh when you uh, and when will you do it will it be tomorrow morning breakfast or will you attack it tonight it's going to be tomorrow morning breakfast that's the that's the best I got a nice bread knife. I'm going to slice it. Good. I usually start actually. Good. It's tough because it's like hard to waste the little end guy. I know. And when you cut it, um, sometimes do, do you ever feel like it looks like a little bunny? Yes. Just check. Yeah. It. When it gets that little. Yeah. From the, so cute. Yeah. It's profile. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'll <laughs> cut off the end a little. That'll be tough to not eat, I guess. I'll try to eat it, but I'm ripping it. Yeah. You know? I usually cut that into little slices and I eat one and then give one to the dog. Okay. Smart. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, I guess I'll work. It'll be, I'll probably have at least two, but since it's on the small end, I might have three. Yeah. <laughs> I love the way you're thinking. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm going to do butter on probably, definitely one, maybe yeah. two. Mm -hmm. And then butter and jam on the third. Ooh, nice. What what kind of jam? I've got a bunch of jams in there right now. I've got peach, rhubarb, um, strawberry. Ooh, I think nice. that's it. I threw away two. I looked at a couple expiration dates yesterday in the oh, fridge. Yeah. And I was like, I am my mother. <laughs> my mom had some ketchup from like 1940. <laughs> I was like, mom... Those dates don't mean anything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and by the way, she's probably right. It's got so many like <laughs> preservatives. <laughs> Do you cook? No. No. Did I, she cook? I, not ever. No. 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 Uh, she was, you know, she definitely tried here and there. Uh -huh. But she was a teacher and three girls. And yeah. We, she would do like spaghetti nests. Uh -huh. Um. <laughs> She always made me yummy Rice Krispies. Oh, yeah. For, for dessert. Sometimes we do a lot of dessert for dinner, like waffles <laughs> with frozen vanilla yogurt and strawberries. Oh, that's good. Um, Taco <laughs> Bell. Nice. Racks. Nice. Wendy's. Solid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, like, what you learn later. Because she, she was never, like, complaining or anything. But there would be times where she was like, yeah, sometimes I just had, like, I forget if it was, like, 13 or 17 bucks to make it to Friday. To the paycheck right so it's like you know you could go to taco bell and get yeah mm. yeah i know that's yeah it, it's a very funny thing when you look back of like the generations before us and how they cooked and because it's it's so crafty now and mm -hmm. people are so into whatever but and then you look it's like no they had to feed yeah. four people mm -hmm. three times a day <laughs> whatever worked yeah whatever you could stretch out whatever worked yeah, and I, I would usually make my own lunch. I'm trying to remember what I do. PB&J, a lot of PB&J. Yeah, I was a salami and cheese. Yum. At the bagel shop, I would take salami, mm -hmm. and then I would put cream cheese down the center and fold it up, and you oh. get like a little taco taquito thingy. <laughs> oh, that's the best. That's so good. That's so good. <laughs> I had a joke in my one of my acts, and it's not really a joke. It's really a thing that uh, the end game for me is when everything go falls apart that I'm going to uh, get a bagel shop at the beach. 
Yeah, I I love that. That's a good. Did I see that in your special? One of them. Did you yeah. see that? Oh yeah, yeah, on the boardwalk or something. Yeah, down at the Jersey Shore. Yeah. Yeah, not a good beach. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And just a place where you could go make the bagels and then be clock out at noon. Yeah. And then just walk on the beach with your wife and dog yeah. and then go back to the bagel shop. That's been a dream of mine, too, to open a bagel shop. I don't know why I always say my hometown, but uh-huh. I want a bagel shop with really good coffee. Yeah, that's key. Yeah. Do you think you'll go back? Um, Like a little salmon? I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. It's interesting. Because I'm like... I'm not married. Mm-hmm. I'm dating somebody who I really like. Yeah. Um, but it's still like newish. Uh-huh. I mean, I don't know. It'll be, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. A year in July. A year? Well, in July. It's in March. July. Yeah. Yeah, it's March. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Do you run out of... Uh, things to talk about? Things to talk about. <laughs> Do you lose interest? Easily or with him? With uh, men? Hmm. I don't know. That's a tough. I guess in the past I have been more, and I have a joke about this where it's like, I love you. And I'm like, I must do, you know, uh-huh. whereas <laughs> I'm choosing the person. Right. So I do feel like I chose this person. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. And that's nice. Yeah. So if anything, it's more like, I'm not questioning it, but it's more like, yeah. does he like me as much as I like him? Right. Like, he shows me he likes me and cares about me, but yeah, yeah, yeah I'm yeah. more like, it, that's the scarier thing is to be like i'm the scarier thing is to choose right which is why i never did it <laughs> right i just dated like a cat brings you roadkill and instead uh. of being like ew i'm like i'll cook it up right now I'll right you know? <laughs> yeah um whatever came to me type mm-hmm. thing and um but yeah i don't know what the future holds i like he has yeah. he has children uh-huh. um from a previous marriage uh-huh how old 10 and 8 mm-hmm. and I don't, I just didn't have a plan in this realm. My plan yeah. was to make a living being funny. Right. And Mission I, accomplished. Yeah. And now my body is for sure barking, uh-huh. you know? Oh, yeah. Like, I'm not saying I'm dying to have a child, but it's interesting that my body is doing things. It's telling you. So, so, so the fact that that's happening is very, you don't want to gaslight yourself. Yeah. You know? <laughs> right. Because it's, it's, just, the body is incredible. Yeah. I, I started adding a couple about a couple of these notions to this current hour, which is like, and I'm about to be not graphic, but descriptive, which mm. is like when you're ovulating, I have this it's a longer bit, but the point is, when yeah. you're ovulating, it's like you're hornier, your boobs are bigger, your <laughs> and then I go, you're discharged. I go, say it again, discharge. Um, <laughs> is stickier because it's like trying to get jizz. <laughs> right. You know, I'm like the body is literally wants it. Yeah. So you have just... these things where you're just sort of like, he's fixed. Uh, this is a lot of details. Uh-huh. Um, so it's not like that is like, a, oops, what what might happen? Right. Interesting. But like, I just. It's one of those things where I'm like, my body is doing things. Mm -hmm. The window will close. Yeah, right. And just like I love animals and pets, Mm -hmm. I don't have one. Right. And (laughs) I would have to arrange some some care for them while I'm gone a lot. Yeah. So I don't know. It's a huge thing. Yeah, just you go, I could go. You could ask me, do you want kids? Tough to answer. I could ask you, yeah. should I have kids? Tough right. to answer. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's sort of, I don't, it's the same thing for marriage where you go, yeah. Um, that's like yeah. not just an answer, it's no. a commitment for a very, very, very long time. I've been saying that in my act recently that because now I've gone through this whole array of doing the whole thing and now they've, they're leaving, they're on their way out. And that's so why I went through this whole thing and, I'm like, I can't tell you how to live your life. You can't even tell you how to, you don't make these decisions. You just, I ended up in this right. position because I just got tired of eating pizza by myself. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I got tired and I saw someone I was, do you want to eat pizza with me? Yeah, <laughs> I've been eating pizza by myself. And then you end up in this life just because you, you were sad eating pizza by yeah. yourself. <laughs> yeah, it f- feels nice to have a buddy like a, <laughs> that you're attracted to that, yeah. you know, to go through things with and i'm happy in that so i don't necessarily feel like i'm need more right but it's there it's a thought no one's like yeah asking intensely i never had a mom that was like where are the grandkids yeah you're right right my sisters also kind of handled that took care of that but okay let's take that that complicated other humans out of it 
Mm -hmm. Is there any drive to you that feels like you should return back to from whence you came? I think similarly to the difficulty of those other Mm -hmm. questions, it seems like a great idea. And I think the reality of it would feel very different. Great point. Because it's like I love visiting home. Mm -hmm. I have a respect for my home. My sisters and my mom live in my hometown. Yeah. I love being there. Would be a very different experience if I had my own home because yeah. I'm still staying at my mom. Sometimes I've actually gotten an Airbnb uh-huh. just to have because after a while there are things that come up where you just go. I actually, do I am an adult and I would like my own <laughs> space. Yeah. You know, I've even rented a car when I probably my mom would have happily picked me up. But it's sure. nice to have some autonomy. Mm-hmm. So yeah, if I had a place, yeah. that might be different. The thought is very romantic. Yeah, the thought is romantic. I have a lot of good times there still. Yeah. I love being there. I love my grocery there. Mm-hmm. There is definitely feels more simple. Yeah. Um, to just pull into a grocery store, yeah, go in, get what you need, and then go home. And be able to make a left-hand turn out mm-hmm. of the parking lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and not have somebody <laughs> flick you off or cut yeah. you off or yell at yeah. you or make you feel like you're the worst human on the planet because you didn't lock my brain in another lane. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I think there's a total of appeal. I know. And, not to mention... I could afford it there to buy a home. Mm-hmm. I read a thing. Oh man, what was it in? Your diary? No, it was a it was a book I was reading recently. But anyway, he was talking about uh, we are. Oh, it's my friend Lillian Lillian King's father wrote this book, and he walked from D.C. to New York. Okay. And he just, he was just going to make this little journey and kind of learn about the country and that kind of thing. And in, anyway, it's a great book, but he was talking about uh, anywhere people and somewhere people. Hmm. Anywhere people can live anywhere and can keep moving, can get with a job, takes them to Chicago and then it takes them to do, to Los Angeles and it takes them to New York and something brings you to South Africa mm-hmm. and you're, and they're comfortable and those are anywhere people. And then there's somewhere people where they live somewhere. Yeah. And that is their place. I guess we're, aren't we anywhere people? We're, I mean, we're, we're have more, to be. We're, we're, yeah, we're anywhere people. Yeah. Yeah. You little Ohio and me, little New Jersey, shouldn't be sitting in Los Angeles right now faking. Cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> it's the <healthier laughs> if we weren't, option. if we weren't anywhere people. <laughs> but there is. is but there is the romantic thing of being a somewhere person. I do have that yeah. drive of like, Maybe the bagel shop. Maybe when I run out of gas, I'll become somewhere people. Yeah. And will that somewhere be where I started? Right. I yeah, don't I don't know. Yeah. It would be it would be romantic to have it be at the next to the my first shop was an ice cream shop and there's like a uh-huh. it's a realtor's now and I always want to be like, just let me have this and open a bagel shop. <laughs> yeah. I think that whenever I walk by. <laughs> yeah. Come on, realtor. Well, I don't want to project or anything, but there may be an opportunity for us to go into business together. That's true. We have the same dream. We do. We could run the bagel shop. And I don't need it to be steamed bagels, just for the record. Okay. I'm open. But we would be grandfathered in and with open arms to that. It's not really even a franchise. It's my, it's, I know the guys, but they would help us out. Oh, really? But again, it's not any pressure for me whatsoever. It's more okay. of a family situation. Oh, really? They're not my real family, but okay. I love them. All right. They could be helpful. Yeah. But that's if we want to do steamed. And I don't know if we want that. Yeah, I know. We don't. They, it has to really fit into our life and make our life better. And if smelling right. like a wet dog is no, not really part of it. I don't think that's it. part of it. Yeah. Also, I'm going to get so involved. It's going to be hard. You're going to walk away on, at noon, and I'm going to be like, i got to count the beans. Yeah, you'll be perfecting the salami cream cheese tacos. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm going to hand you one before you go on a walk. <laughs> and I'm going to like this. <sighs> He's always enjoying himself. I'm in here toiling away. <laughs> uh, is there any place that people can find out where you're performing and see this new hour? Yes. That's making angry old OWGs. <laughs> um. <laughs> Yes, bethstelling.com. Beautiful. And it's like spelling, but with a T as in turkey. <laughs> Not sterling or starling or spelling, but stelling. <laughs> You've said that a couple times. That's, that's, that, bethstelling.com. That, that's you being the, uh, the guy at the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I got a couple more tour dates this spring. I was going to kind of take the summer off. Oh, good. That's a, that's yeah. nice. And I was thinking about filming a new special too, but yeah, yeah, in June ish because oh, I feel yeah. like I have a new hour that I like. I oh, that'd know. be cool. Yeah, yeah. I have to. I have a call after this about my special, and I'm, I kind of want to just say, "Can we just do one? What's wrong with doing one?" Yeah. Why do they want you? To, they basically the, they're you're saying it's they're going to be like we want to. We're going to shoot two. We're going to shoot two tonight, in one night. Yeah. How about we just do one packed and then let them. After it, we're at a taping. Yeah. I'm going to fix some things. Yes. Why not? I'm with you on that, obviously. Yours was so good. And Thank it's you. like th th that element probably had something to do with it. Definitely. Yeah. Well, this is it. Let's yeah. roll. It's pretty cool. Because usually it's everyone's always like, I think. We got it. Yeah. Everybody's always like, we got to have fun the second one. Right. And then you use all the second one. <laughs> right. Oh, no. yeah. yeah. I don't know. Some people use the first. I'm trying to remember on my past ones and I don't. I don't either. But. Yeah. Yeah, Comedy Central when they were putting together the putting us in the little machine. Yeah, you got one take. Yeah, you're right. You showed up. You That's did right. It. Yeah, we weren't doing two. I mean, there's people who do many, 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 many. I know. It's pretty wild. I yeah. mean, look, I'm not saying I'm necessarily judging you. You got the money, do it. But yeah, mm -mm. there's so many. I don't know. There's just so there's yeah. too much to have to. Yeah, just I know. do it. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> I've been doing this constantly around the country for yeah. two years, and now you get to see what it is. Do you repeat a city with the hour sometimes mm, as it's growing, or no? Not really. Yeah. Well, I don't think I do either. I'm scared. Yeah, you know, I did go recently. I was someplace, not the same venue, but the same town, and they had seen it, seen me, but so much had changed. Okay. Within that, it was still yeah. the fresh thing, but so much had changed. That makes sense. Yeah. I never find out, really, because once I start asking them, they're like, why? They're like, well, did you see the new stuff? They're like, we I see you every time. I can't remember what I had for lunch. Yeah, right. We, we see you every time. We don't I care. definitely get a little too worried about it. Yeah. Because I'm always like, I won't return unless I have a new hour. And yeah. Like, I just want to see it again. And they glaze over. Yeah. Well, I hope you enjoy your bread. I'm going to love it. All right. Thank you. Thank you. For having me. You're the best. And for my bread. We got it, Joe. We got it. <laughs>